Hello, all. So uh, today is the first lecture for uh, PowerPoint. So this is going to be on module one. There are going to be a total of three modules. <clears throat> so the first thing to remember is that PowerPoint is what we call presentation software. And basically, what's a presentation? Well, a presentation is something that accompanies usually somebody speaking, right? And in this case, <clears throat> in PowerPoint, our main object is a slide. So if you look at my screen, you can see, and here's PowerPoint, and I want to make sure that it's sharing the right screen. Yes, it is. So here's PowerPoint. And when you start a blank presentation or a new presentation, you get a what we call a title slide. So the main object in a PowerPoint presentation is called a slide. So we're basically creating a slideshow. Now, before we start planning a slideshow, it's very important to understand who your audience is going to be because we wanna tailor our slides to the audience. And we, we're going to tailor how we speak to our audience, too. So a presentation, uh, an in-class presentation for a college course or is going to be very different than if you're giving a presentation to a bunch of um, third graders or second graders, right? It's going to look different. You're going to have different effects that you're going to use. Um, you're going to use different language. So <clears throat> we have to be aware that we need to tailor our presentations to the audience. That's one. Two, we also need to be aware of the environment that we're going to give the presentation in. So for instance, uh, if I'm giving it in a room that has a bunch of windows uh, or that doesn't have a projector with a screen, uh, I have to bring my own kind of projector that's not as good right, then I want to tailor the way my slides look so that it's easier to see. Um, right, I may not want to use like white text and stuff. So um, we'll talk about that as we get there. So may, maybe more contrasting. Uh, the time of day. So if it's nighttime or dark, right, then I can go with more contrasty because I can probably turn the lights off in the room, even though there are windows that I can't close or cover. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking out my window to see what I could do. This room is actually fairly dark. So in here, um, I could probably control the lighting enough even during the daytime to see a PowerPoint presentation very well. So <clears throat> who your audience is determines what your slides look like, right? Bright, colory, simple words. Um, maybe animations and sound effects to keep the the you know the the second graders uh, attention, um, and <clears throat> the language that we use, and two, where place. So where is it going to be given? How much control do we have over um, the slideshow environment, basically? So having said that. There are ribbons and tabs. There's the quick access toolbar in the upper left corner, just like with every other program in Microsoft Office that you can customize. So you can put spelling and you can do print preview. I, I like to add my spell check up there. I also like to add a print preview and print. Uh, in PowerPoint, I typically don't add the quick print, which I do add in Word and Excel. Um, but yeah, so we still have our quick access toolbar. Uh, I still have my ribbons. This looks very different than the other two programs. Although this shouldn't be too difficult because I assume that a lot of you have used PowerPoint already. And PowerPoint is fairly simple. So here I have, if I look at the bottom left-hand corner here of my screen, I have four different views. This is called, whoops, this is called the normal view. The normal view shows me one big slide and it may actually show me uh, a notes pane. 
there's a little notes thing right here. So if I click on that, you can see that my slide gets a little bit smaller. And um, I now have a new pane where I can click to add notes for the slide, which is also some good advice, by the way. And we'll talk about notes later. I like to keep it on. It reminds me to add notes. So there's one. That's our normal view. On the left-hand side in the normal view, I have a uh, thumbnail view of some of my slides. And uh, as I get more slides, I'll have to scroll up and down. Second, we have what's called the slide sorter view. And the slide sorter view doesn't make any sense right now, but we'll get back to that. I just don't have enough slides. Thirdly, we have the reading view, which, um, I don't know, we'll get, we'll get to that too. Um, what did I just do? Let me go back to my normal view. Oh, the last view we have is the actual slideshow view. And the slideshow view shows me every slide that I have one at a time. And I don't have anything on that slide yet. So that's why it's just a big white screen. So we'll get there. Now, slides are made up of placeholders. So here I have two placeholders and these are both text boxes. And slides have different layouts. So we'll talk about layouts in a minute too. So what do I do to add a title here? This is called a title slide and that's the kind of layout it is. And here I'm going to actually add a title, Global Workforce Trends. So we just click and type. Now, each placeholder on a slide has some formatting already applied to it. So you'll notice that the, this is the actual title. Here I have a subtitle. The text is a little bit smaller. And I'm going to do presented by oops, and I'm pressing enter between the lines that I want, and it, it just does a um, it does a new line in the placeholder. It's the point with an I. There we go. And then I press enter, it moves me down. And then technical careers division. Oops, I spelled stuff wrong. Now, <clears throat> when things are underlined in red, and this holds true for um, word also doesn't necessarily mean it's spelled wrong. It just means that it's not in the dictionary. And in this case, it is spelled wrong. <laughs> there we go. So now I fixed all that. We check spelling the same way. You can either use the spell check and go through your whole thing, which is probably more efficient. But I hate red, especially on slides. So I right click on each word and then fix it. Um, so I've added some text here. I now have a slide. So now if I go to my slideshow view, uh, I still only have one slide in my presentation. But uh, if I click on that, then you can see that it's actually showing me the slide full screen. Okay, so now I just press escape to get back into a slideshow view. So now I, here I am in normal view and I'm gonna click over here on the left and I'm gonna add a new slide. So if I click the new slide button right here, it's in the slides group on the home ribbon. And if I just click the icon, it's going to add a title content slide. And that's actually what I want. But if I click down here underneath, you can see that I have different slide layouts. So I have title content, which is what it does automatically. I can have um, two content, a comparison title only, 
a section header, picture with caption. So there are different options here. Uh, I'm just going to use this one and I'm gonna click up at the top to add a title. It's supposed to say immediate effects. Oh, and I'm supposed to, oh, I'm gonna change this. Okay, so I'm gonna change it to um, a two slide. Uh, am I, what am I supposed to do here? Uh, type relationship between, uh, I'm supposed to create two slides. Relationship between companies and workers. And I got to fix that and get rid of that bracket, which shouldn't be there. <clears throat> relationship between companies and workers. Down here, this is a content placeholder. So the content placeholder is going to give me, I have uh, eight, nine different people, well, kind of nine different kinds of content. They're not really nine. One is text. So there's my first kind of content. Second, I could add a table or a chart or a smart art graphic. I could add a 3D model. Then I have two pictures. One is pictures from a file, and this one is online pictures. I could insert a video here or insert an icon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually insert text. So I'm gonna click here and type global trends. Now, when we insert text, into a placeholder like this, it's going to create, every time I press enter, a bulleted list, basically. <clears throat> and so the way we do this is like, if global trends is my major topic, then that's a bullet item. But let's say that I have some subtopics below that, then I need to create what we call a nested list. And I do that, there's two ways to do it. Uh, one is to, uh, decrease or increase the list level. So here I've decreased, I can press tab, which is what I did here. Let me back that out. So let me press enter and then I can click increase list level. And you can see that my insertion point has moved over and I can click it again and I can move over a whole bunch or I can decrease the list level and so in this case, I want to be here. So I'm going to type, um, this is a second level bullet is what it's called, hiring practices since 2009. And then I'm going to press enter. And when I do that, it stays at the same list, list level. So if I have another bullet uh, that goes under global trend, then, um, and it should be global trends with an S, then I would just stay here. In this instance, I'm supposed to decrease my list level, which basically means that now I have another major point. So the next one is uh, reduction of full-time employees. And I'm good. Now, also as you increase or decrease the list level, uh, you should notice that the font size changes. So as we uh, increase our list level, the font size gets smaller. And when I, I decrease it back to the main one, it, it's the biggest. So now it says I'm done. And so what they want me to do is they want me to, to create a new slide. And they want me to click on the text for new slide and they want to use a different layout. I'm gonna do a two content layout. 
And you can see that it has a place for a title, and then I have a place to add some content and another place to add content. <clears throat> Immediate effects. Then on the, in the left content, I'm gonna add a bulleted list. So I'm gonna add text. So all I gotta do is type. Independent workers, free agents. I'm supposed to increase my list level. Now you can do that with the tab key also, by the way. Uh, oops, capital. Okay, so now I'm going to click off of this, and so you can see what it looks like. By the way, uh, the information that you put on your slide should just be highlights. It shouldn't, it, normally it's not in sentences, although sometimes we do have sentences or paragraphs, but normally it's just the bullet list of the highlights of what it is that you're going to be talking about, filling in the details. Uh, <clears throat> if you have too many sentences or you have everything kind of written out on your slides, what happens is people stop listening to the presentation and they start reading the slides. And so we want to make sure that the slides emphasize what it is that we're talking about, what the important parts are, and then we fill in the details. So now we're talking about formatting text. And formatting text, basically, I'm going to go to this text box up at the top here. I, first, I need to go to my first slide. So the easy way to navigate is to just click the first slide. So here I am. This is my first slide. It's by the way, the layout is a title slide, which is always your first slide. Um, I'm going to click on the second one. And we can highlight words by double clicking, just like we can in Word. So I'm going to highlight this word. And then I'm going to click dark red color box. So dark red, which one is dark red? That looks like it's dark red. So I'm just going to change the color. I'm going to make it bold and italics. So bold and italicized. And I'm good. Now I'm going to come down here, uh, over here, and click my presented by. And I'm going to triple click it. And we know that if you triple click on something, you select a paragraph. And in this case, because I pressed enter here, this each one of these lines is a paragraph. So I can triple click that. And I'm going to uh, change the font size to 28. Oops. There we go. So I'm supposed to select the text global workforce trends here. And what I want to show you is a way to work with everything that's in a placeholder. So this is a text box. It's a box that will hold text and <clears throat> without having to select this by triple clicking on it, I know it's not hard, but um, uh, whenever you wanna work with everything in a uh, placeholder, content placeholder, if, well, let me, let me start this way. If I click this or just click somewhere in this placeholder, then you can see that the placeholder shows up. And by the way, I can resize this, I can move it around, uh, I can rotate it, I can move it, so we have freedom when it comes to working with 
are placeholders. We're allowed to move them around. But the first time I click on it to select it, it's got a dashed line around it. And by the way, you can resize just like you can with a graphic. So if I want to work with everything that's in this placeholder, I can click it again. If I click on that outline, it now goes to a solid line. And so with a solid line, I'm now working with everything that's inside that placeholder. So when I make any kind of formatting changes, it's going to apply to everything. And here I'm supposed to change the font to Corb C O R. Corbell. So I'm going to use Corbell. Then I'm going to underline this. And I'm going to change the font size by one. So it went from 60 to 66. It's up one. Now I'm going to click on the slide kind of outside of all my placeholders to see what it looks like. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't like it, I would keep making changes. Now, one of the nice things about uh, PowerPoint is that we can apply a design temp or a theme, a design theme. And <clears throat> this changes kind of all of my formatting. It'll even move my placeholders around. So if I go to my design ribbon, you can see that I have a whole bunch of themes. And when I mouse over one, so I'm not clicking on it, I'm just moving the mouse over one, it shows me what the slide is going to look like. And you can see that it's moved my title placeholder down and to the left. It's changed the uh, font color to white. In my subtitle, oops, in my subtitle, it's changed the uh, color, font color to a, like a light bluish, greenish kind of color. It's changed the background color, obviously. Um, and I have a whole bunch of different, and you can see it's using different font types. I have a whole bunch of different themes that I can pick from. I even have to scroll down. Uh, I can even uh, browse for themes. So there are more themes. But as I mouse over them, you can see that I have all kinds of different options here. So which one am I supposed to use? Probably an ugly one. I'm supposed to use the gallery theme. The gallery theme is that one. Oh, I actually kind of like that. Oh, I'm supposed to click on the slice theme. Which one is the slice theme? Um, is it that one? No, that's slate. It's supposed to be slice. View, vapor trail, mesh. It's a dark one. Well, that's gonna be hard for me to find unless it shows me what it is. It's really dark. So let me see. Depth, slice, that's it. Oh, they changed the color, got it. So we're gonna click this one. <laughs> and now my theme has been applied to all of my slides. Oh, I clicked on that, didn't mean to. We'll go back to my design. And I have variants. So for each one of these themes, if I look over here on my right-hand side, I can change the color variant. And I can change it to whatever color I have in my options list here. And I can even customize the colors. So I think that's what I'm supposed to do. I haven't read ahead. So, um,
So let's see what I have here. Um, what do they want me to do? Now they want me to use the mesh theme. So the mesh theme I thought was down here, this one. So they want me to actually pick the mesh theme. <clears throat> so do I have my mesh theme applied to all of my slides? Yes, I do. <clears throat> okay, so I'm good. So let's see what we what we want to do now. Well, oh, now we can look at the different views and it makes a little bit more sense. So I'm going to go to my slide sorter view. And the slide sorter view is very handy when you have a large amount of slides. Three slides, it's not really that great for a three slide a presentation because I can see all three slides here in the normal view, just at the on the left side. And I can click and move between them. I can actually click and drag them and change the position of the slide. So I can sort them here, I can reorder them, okay? But once I have 25, 30 slides, then it's difficult for me to see them over here because I have to scroll up and down. And so that's when the slide sorter view really comes in handy. Uh, here, I can move things around and reorder my slides so I can sort them. Uh, the other thing that I can do very quickly is I can double click on one of these to get into the normal view and edit it. So that's really where slide sorter view comes into play is when you have uh, a lot of slides. Um, so here I'm gonna go to my slideshow view and you can see that it's gonna show me one slide at a time. And I can use the space bar or the left arrow and the right arrow, up and down arrows. Uh, I can use the wheel and the mouse to navigate forward and backwards. Um, so I can go through a slideshow any number of ways. I can press enter. See, this is my second slide. Here's my third slide. When I get to the last slide and I press, I'm still gonna use the mouse button to click. It takes me to a black screen. The black screen is there so that the, the people in the audience are no longer distracted by your slides if you say, hey, are there questions? <clears throat> or is it, does anybody wanna buy my product that I just uh, asked you about? Now, if I go one more time, so if I press enter or space or the forward arrow. Is your car out of the gas? Uh, no, I don't. Or, um, if I click the button one more time, it's gonna take me back into PowerPoint and back into the normal view. Uh, by the way, you can exit your slideshow at any time by clicking the escape button and that'll take you back into PowerPoint. So, um, well, I should probably mention that. There are two views. So you can click on normal view and it'll show you this. It shows you the thumbnail slides on one side and it shows you your main slide. And then you have a notes pane at the bottom. If you click it again, the pane on the left changes to a outline text-based uh, version, <laughs> um, which sometimes comes in handy. So um, I'm gonna click that and come back. We'll get back to that. Okay, so there are our presentation views. Now, the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a picture. So here I have a second content placeholder. And so I'm going to insert a picture and I think it's from a file. So I'm gonna click just pictures and not online. And then I'm gonna to go to, ooh, there's weird pictures of me. Uh, I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I have CIS1 Office 2019 data files. And that's not it. Neither one of those is it. Woman JPEG is what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to minimize this and see what's actually in my Office data files. 
So these, this is my data file list. And I'm gonna change the view here to icons. And I can see that I don't have that picture, which is odd. I should have it. I had, I've had it before, <laughs> which is why I'm, I'm saying it's a little odd that I don't have it now. Uh, what's over here? No. Okay, so let's do this. Let me look for it. So I'm going to uh, click on the online picture placeholder. And now it opens up in Powered by Bing. So I'm going to look for woman. Cross my fingers, I don't get anything bad. Okay, so here I have, and I'm supposed to have a businesswoman. So maybe I should have done businesswoman. Ah, see, I'm very close. Black suit, white jacket. Let's see if I can find the one that they have. It doesn't look like I'm, I'm having any luck so far. And for some reason, it's taking a little bit of time to insert. Uh, to um, load, I should say. So I don't see it. So I'm going to say businesswoman with folders in her hand. Ah, look, now I'm getting a whole bunch of businesswomen with folders. But I'm still not getting the one I want. So I, I want something that's close, at least uh, in shape and size. And see, now I'm away. So let me go back up to the top here and just pick one of these. Um, how about I pick this one? Because that looks like it's a rectangular shape. So I'm going to click on this one. And then I'm going to insert it. And it fits the placeholder. Now, that doesn't mean I can't resize or do other things. Ooh, I'm turning blue. So um, that's a little bit odd. As it gets darker, I'm turning bluer. So I have my picture in my slide. And what they want me to do is they want me to, to resize the left part of the slide. Now, what happens when you just resize an image uh, using only one side is that we tend to get skinnier people in this case, right? Or I tend to get stretched out people. <clears throat> We're changing the proportions of the image. So I'm going to click my undo button. It's on the quick access toolbar. And um, oh, I did that one wrong. So let me undo. Undo is my favorite button. Oops, I went one too far. So let me go back to my normal view. And I, what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to take this slide, slide number two, and I'm supposed to show you that you can change the layout. So you're not locked into a particular layout, even once you've, you've added the slide and you've formatted it and, and edited it. So I'm going to click on this slide, select this slide. It is selected. I'm going to go to my layout, and I'm going to change the layout to a two-content layout. And I'm going to click on that, and you can see that it changed a little bit. My text got a little smaller over here on the left. And I'm going to add a picture 
And what is it that I wanted? I wanted um, businesswoman. I might pick a different picture. So I'm going to pick this one, I think. Yeah, I'm going to pick this one because the picture that's in the book, uh, the woman is towards the right side. <clears throat> now on this one, it says, this photo by unknown author is licensed under this. So I can highlight this little area here and I can just delete it. Oops, I got to highlight just that one. So I have to be careful to highlight just the bottom piece and not the whole thing. Oops, I want to highlight the whole thing. So I clicked on the border to make the border um, solid. And now when I press the delete button, the whole thing went away. So now I'm supposed to resize this a little bit, uh, which I'm not going to actually do right now. Well, actually, no, I don't want to. So I'm going to undo that. <coughs> And now they talk about the zoom. So zoom, oops, zooming in and out. So if I hold down control and I zoom, just like in Word, it zooms in and out. And they want me to make the picture kind of fill my screen here. So I'm going to use my, let me zoom out just a little bit there. That's better. So. Now I'm ready to, to work with this a little bit. So you can zoom in and out of a slide. Right? I can zoom. That's as, as far as I can zoom. And I can click fit current slide to window uh, over here next to the zoom slider. And that will resize the slide. So what's the next thing that I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to check the spelling and print a slide or a presentation. So uh, I need to have office hours right now. So I'm going to pause this for a couple of minutes and then I'll be back. 